My name is Josh Wood. I'm the executive director of Sageland Collaborative. Our volunteers are, I think dedication is the main thing. They really want to get involved and make a positive difference in the world around them. So that kind of unifies everybody. And I love working with them, um, getting outside and getting dirty, doing something good for the community and wildlife. And it's just great to be able to put all that work at the desk into action and to get outside and see it happening. We are in the Sawtooth Mountains at this beautiful alpine lake and we were lucky enough to see a black rosy finch. As some of you know, we have our volunteer feeder watch counts in the winter and so for the folks that are lucky enough to have rosy finches at your home bird feeders, this is where they come in the summertime up to these beautiful high alpine areas and lakes. So rosy finches are important to me and they're also important to the work at Sageland Collaborative because we really value species diversity and one of our goals is to support species of conservation need and black rosy finches are one of those species. Because of the threats of climate change on the alpine habitat, we think that they could be in trouble. So by coupling the work of researchers, um, our other colleagues across the Intermountain West, we're able to piece together the full story for rosy finches so that we can then protect, manage, conserve them. If folks want to get involved, uh, they can go see Sage and Collaborative's Rosie Finch website page and you can become a feeder watcher and count rosy finches um, from your backyard or a local nature center. When volunteers come out with us to do boreal toad surveys, we will search for toads, we'll take any biometrics, which is the weight and kind of length of the toad to see how old it is, and we'll take some water quality measurements so we can kind of measure environmental change over time. This program is important for their conservation because they are spread throughout the whole state. It is really difficult to monitor them all in their entirety in just a very short period of time that they're out and about because they do hibernate for maybe six months of the year sometimes. So without the volunteer support, there's just no way we could collect the vast amount of data that we're currently collecting. And that goes back to the DWR and it really helps them, you know, make their management plans with the most amount of data available. So 2022 saw our most successful field season to date in terms of participation with the most community scientists, the most field hours and the most surveys conducted over the summer. So I feel like that's a really big achievement for the program and for everyone involved so far. Just a huge thank you to all the volunteers and all of our partners because we really just couldn't do it without you. And we just get so much done with your help um, and it would otherwise be impossible. So thank you so much. Wasatch Wildlife Watch is a community science or citizen science camera trapping project, all about providing empirical evidence for how we can actually inform conservation and management on the ground. Kind of the main goal was understanding how humans and wildlife can coexist in an ever-changing world. Thank you to volunteers from this year because it was kind of this weird combination of incredibly hot days or incredibly wet days. Um, but just like previous years, we've had close to like 95% participation rates. There's so much that impresses me about volunteers. We have a really incredible group. We have people that will hike hundreds and hundreds of miles every single year. Um, we have people that will want to take multiple cameras. We have people that have entered tens of thousands of of photos into Wildlife Insights. It's really cool just kind of becoming friends with all of these amazing people and really seeing all these different perspectives that are going into the project and kind of shaping it as it's actively running. Know that this data is actively being used for the intentions that you joined the project for. That we're not just using this for scientific research, we're also leveraging this data to really get at these management implications to make it so where you recreate in the Wasatch is going to be preserved for future generations. That's really the major goal of the project. I love our stream program. I love getting a large group of people together who 
probably don't know each other, have never met, and then they're working together, performing different tasks. Some people are gathering materials, others are in the streams. They're dedicated to conserving the environment around them and benefiting wildlife, and they often are professionals. They might work in offices or go to school, or they're retired, and they get to turn into an eight-year-old and play in the mud and do something that is making an immediate impact. And that's something I love as well, people seeing the stream pooling and you see that immediate impact and what it's going to mean, and also the opportunity to talk about the long-term benefits of our work. So every year, the project size is growing. So there's a lot of momentum behind this style of restoration, and I think you'll see why if you take a look at them. Um, they're capturing massive amounts of sediment that's not clogging irrigation ditches or going down to Echo uh, Reservoir. So uh, it's just a really direct, tangible benefit. We've gotten pretty good at building fake beaver dams, um, but we all know that beavers do a much better job than any human could. In a lot of the places where we've worked, beavers have returned. There's plenty of management that goes along with that. However, um, the beavers really can maintain these structures without too much human intervention. As many of you probably already know, pollinators across North America are experiencing huge declines. And one of the primary goals of the Utah pollinator pursuit is to make sure that Utah native pollinators uh, increase in population and continue to persist on the landscape. So I don't think I'm alone, but I definitely want to see pollinator species throughout Utah, throughout North America, um, persist into the future. I have young children, I want them to be able to experience that wonder and awe of you know looking at a flower and seeing three different species of bees on it and you know watching a butterfly go from flower to flower and I just I just hope that that's in the future for my children and their children and so on. So this year, our fourth year of the Utah Pollinator Pursuit Project, we have a lot to be proud of. Uh, one of the outcomes I'm very excited about um, that would not be possible without the support of community scientists is we now have a really well fleshed out map of the state of Utah and where uh, monarchs are occurring as well as the distribution of some western bumblebee um, habitats that we were not aware of before. This information is super valuable as we have listing decisions coming up about those species and whether they should be considered threatened or endangered. And the state of Utah has this new information because of the support of community scientists like you. Sageland Collaborative is a wonderful place where anybody can get involved, whether you are a PhD candidate at a university or a student or retiree who just wants to get outside and make a positive difference in the world around us. There's a place for you. Thank you to all of our volunteers, everyone, everyone who's new and they found us and they found a home to volunteer with us and the many dedicated people that keep coming back every year for multiple programs. It's really impressive how much time and effort and passion they put into volunteering. And I'm just grateful and really in awe of their dedication. <laughs>